with their baby due in only a few weeks. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex must be looking forward to nesting in their new home, especially because their Windsor pad is going to be state-of-the-art, according to a palace aide. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were given the keys to Frogmore Cottage at the start of March, but they won't be able to move and for a couple of weeks they have packed up their belongings at their rented farmhouse in the Cotswolds and are ready to move as soon as Frogmore Cottage is ready, with just a matter of weeks until her due date believed to be the end of April, the couple hope to be in Windsor before their baby arrives. When Kensington Palace first announced the impending move last fall, it was scheduled for some time in the spring. But as March draws to a close, the renovations are taking longer than expected, and builders are working around the clock to get the project finished. According to The Sun, construction has been delayed by nearly a month partly because the Sussexes have changed their minds about the design of their new home. A source told the newspaper, given the scale of the project, a three or four week delay isn't too bad. The couple are pleased with how it's all going. The renovation, which will ultimately cost about £3 million, has transformed the historic cottage into a five-bedroom family home. The house, a wedding gift from the Queen, will have a yoga studio a nursery complete with a high-tech security and music system, a modern dine-in kitchen largely designed by Meghan herself, and a guest annex, to be occupied by Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, for several weeks after the baby's birth. Work on the estate has been extensive, and this weekend The Sun reported that the couple has spent £50,000 soundproofing the property which is situated directly below Heathrow flight paths. The location has advantages and disadvantages. They are near Heathrow, which is great because Doria will be coming over a lot, but there are a lot of flights daily which is pretty noisy, a source tells Vanity Fair. It is still not known whether Sussex is planned to have their baby. According to a source at Street Mary's Hospital in London, their names are not on the list for the Lindo Wing. However, in January The Telegraph reported that hospital staff have been told not to take annual leave in April, which means the hospital may well be an option if the couple are in Frogmore Cottage before the baby arrives. The obvious choice would be Frimley Park Hospital where the Countess of Wessex had both her babies. Just 15 miles from their new home, the NHS hospital has private rooms in their Mulberry Birth Centre. Princess Diana died in a tragic car crash in 1997 but the forensic pathologist who studied the extent of her injuries claimed in normal circumstances the injuries would not have proved life-threatening. The late princess suffered a small punctured vein in her lung in the crash, but forensic pathologist Dr. Richard Shepard said she could have easily survived if circumstances were different. Dr. Shepard said Diana's injury was just in the wrong place and if she was hit at a different angle, or with slightly less force, she would not have died. Writing in the Daily Mail, he said, Diana's was a very small injury, but in the wrong place. Diana's death is a classic example of the way we say, after almost every death, if only, if only she had hit the seat in front at a slightly different angle, if only she had been thrown forward 10 miles per hour more slowly, if only she had been put in an ambulance immediately. But the biggest if only, in Diana's case, was within her own control. If Princess Diana was wearing a seat belt at the time, there was a high chance she would not have died in the crash, Dr. Shepard said. He added, if only she had been wearing a seat belt. Had she been restrained, she would probably have appeared in public two days later with a black eye. Perhaps a bit breathless from the fractured ribs and with a broken arm in a sling. The pathology of her death is, I believe, indisputable. But around that tiny, fatal tear in a pulmonary vein are woven many other facts, some of which are sufficiently opaque to allow a multitude of theories to blossom. The late princess did not suffer many injuries in the crash apart from a few broken bones and a small chest injury, but it was a tiny punctured vein in her lungs that killed her. In 2004, UK's top forensic pathologist Dr Richard Shepard was called to give evidence for Operation Paget, a major inquiry involving Princess Diana's death. The police inquiry was led by Sir John Stevens in a bid to debunk the various conspiracy theories surrounding Diana's death. Following the crash, 
Diana was able to communicate with emergency services after the crash, but lost consciousness in the ambulance and suffered a cardiac arrest. Doctors soon realized she had a punctured vein in her lungs, and Diana underwent a major operation but ended up dying in surgery. Speaking about her injury, Dr. Shepard said, veins, of course, are not subject to the same high-pressure pumping as arteries. They bleed much more slowly. In fact, they bleed so slowly that identifying the problem is hard enough. And, if it is identified, repairing it is even harder. Her specific injury is so rare that in my entire career I don't believe I've seen another. There were four victims in the accident, driver Henri Paul, Diana, her boyfriend Dodie Fade, and bodyguard Trevor Rees Jones, who was seated next to the driver and in front of the princess. Mr. Rees Jones was the only survivor in the crash, and was the only one wearing his seat belt. Dr. Shepard said Diana's position in the car made her less vulnerable than the other passengers, who ended up absorbing more force from the crash. Speaking about the accident, Dr. Shepard wrote in the Daily Mail, Diana was slightly more fortunate because their bodyguard, Trevor Rhys Jones, was sitting in front of her and he was strapped in. She was much lighter than Dodie and Rhys Jones's belt would have absorbed some of the extra force. This slightly lessened the energy of the impact for her. Princess Diana died in a car crash at the Pont de la Tunnel in Paris, France, 1997. Meghan Markle's dad is clinging to hope that she will reach out to him after the arrival of her first child. Thomas Markle is bitterly upset at the idea of not meeting his grandchild and hopes Meghan will give him the opportunity at some point. According to a friend he doesn't know what else he can do to repair their relationship and hopes the Duchess will decide to give him another change. After the baby arrives, the pal told the Express. He'd give anything to meet the new arrival in person and hopes he can prove to his daughter that their relationship is worth a second chance and he should have a place in their lives. He is still clinging to the hope his daughter will call him at some stage to share her happiness. He has said, what else can I do? He is bitterly upset by the thought of not being able to meet his new grandchild. The distance in miles and emotions between him and Meghan hasn't stopped him feeling proud for her and his new grandchild. He'd give anything to meet the new arrival in person and hopes he can prove to his daughter that their relationship is worth a second chance and he should have a place in their lives. The friend also revealed that Thomas plans to celebrate the birth with a few beers at his local beach bar. They added, he is genuinely thrilled that his daughter is expecting her first child later this month. He's been looking around baby stores for an appropriate gift to send. He even joked that the new arrival was likely to be showered with expensive baby items from Tiffany. With a little welcome to Tijuana t shirt from him in the middle. Joking aside, though, the distance in miles and emotions between him and Meghan hasn't stopped him feeling proud for her and his new grandchild. He aims to sink a couple of beers in his local bar when he or she is born. Social media is a breeding ground for conspiracy theories and it seems the Duchess of Sussex's pregnancy has become the latest target. According to The Sun, outrageous trolls are falsely claiming that Meghan is not actually expecting and that her baby bump is actually a moon bump prosthetic. The Times reported that a YouTube video which claims to provide absolute proof Meghan's pregnancy is fake has had over 208k views. The channel that hosts it has 31,000 subscribers and the person behind it has launched a number of videos repeating the same false allegation, with each one getting 50,000 hits. The first was released on the day that 37-year-old Meghan's pregnancy was announced by Kensington Palace. The crazy conspiracy theory, circulated by people who dislike the Duchess, suggests the royal couple have a secret surrogate who is really carrying the baby. Beyoncé was also subjected to such claims when she was pregnant with twins. The false claims, which have also been doing the round on Twitter, 
Instagram and on Prince Harry fan pages on Facebook, link the fake pregnancy to a wider conspiracy involving global elites. The trolls point to a photo recently circulated online in which the baby bump looks square. But an obstetric nurse also waded in to say that she had seen all shapes and sizes of baby bumps and Megan's was not unusual. The former actress has been subjected to torrents of racist and sexist abuse on social media in the past. Last month, in a speech at King's College London, she said she now avoided social media. And after the couple launched their Instagram page this week, racist comments were posted on the profile. Meghan's due date has not been announced but is thought to be later this month or the beginning of May. The Duke and Duchess have now moved into Frogmore Cottage in Windsor after a £3 million refurbishment.